Hello and welcome to A Little Crafting. My name is Annie and this is my occasional podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been making. Um, that usually consists of knitting, some weaving, some yarn dyeing, some sewing sometimes as well. Um, and I record from Surrey, which is just southwest of London in the UK. Um, if you'd like to find me on social media, you can find me on Instagram as a underscore little underscore crafting and on Ravelry as AnkiWoo. And thank you very much for joining me today. Um, today is February the 11th, 2023, and I have recorded this podcast twice before already. Um, so I had two recordings over the last week. And unfortunately I had a cold last week and that meant that every time I tried recording my throat would get dry, I'd be sniffling, you know, something like that. So I decided just to give up <laughs> and record this weekend instead. Uh, so I'm repeating myself but you won't know that. Um, thanks very much for joining and let's get started talking about some of the things that I have been making. Um, so the elephant in the room is that some time ago I jumped on the bandwagon and started knitting a Sophie shawl which is a pattern by Petite Knit um, and this is a really simple garter a shawl that is knit from a pointy end to the centre and then back down to the other end. So I'll take this off actually and then you can see what it looks like. So uh, for my one I have knit this out of DK weight uh, yarn. I've used two skeins of 100 grams and this is a colour that I dyed myself on some organic merino that um, I was dyeing and I absolutely adore this colour. It's just one of those things that goes so well with a neutral, for example the polo neck that I'm wearing at the moment goes really well over my coat and I think it's a colour that just really suits me. It's that kind of natural pink um, that's kind of, my, my grandmother would have called it vieux rose in French, so like old pink, so kind of faded pink rather than bright pink and I need to check that I wrote down the recipe for this because it is absolutely beautiful. Um, and I have been wearing this a couple of times already this week. But yes, yeah, so to talk about the pattern, very very simple pattern, um, I think it's only about £3 to purchase and it's well worth it because um, Petite Knit gives you a lot of explanation on how to use up all your yarn. So you want to be using half your yarn up to the centre and then half up to the end. Um, so you essentially do garter ridges, you've got a beautiful I-cord edge that's quite simple to do as well and I absolutely adore the finish on this edge. Um, but yeah, garter back and forth uh, and then you, you increase occasionally. That's pretty much the idea. And then when you've used up half your yarn, you start decreasing at the same rate and then you end up with this lovely kind of offset um, triangle or sort of shallow triangle shawl um, and I love it and I think actually this size is absolutely perfect so showing you how I would wear it um, I've got the pointy bit at the front here and I'm just wrapping it round um, and if I wanted to I could wrap it a little bit more but I've got um, a fair amount just hanging um, and I think that just looks really nice, essentially just looks like a nice little scarf um, and it's very warm as well because it's knit out of that 100% uh, merino wool that I dyed. Um, and yeah, super happy with the pattern, I would absolutely recommend it. In fact, I am going to be casting on another one in some more of my hand dyed yarn because I've dyed a lot of this base, this organic merino, I do love dyeing it. I love the colour that it produces. It's much more muted than something like the Superwash yarn, but I, I really like that. And I'm a big fan of DK weight yarn. I use it a lot, so I thought I'd um, dye up a few different colours. I think I've got some green, I've got some blue, I've got some more of this pink, but much more variegated. Um, 
with some darker sections in it which will look really nice but I'm gonna go for the blue first so I've got a kind of bluey greeny kind of color that's quite light almost turquoise but not as bright again because it's been sort of it's on non-superwash yarn so it's kind of a bit muted and I think I'm gonna get a loads of wear out of this and it was just such an easy simple pattern to be making so it ended up being my D&D &D knitting um, and if you've listened to the podcast before what I tend to do is during longer D&D &D sessions usually two, two to three hours long and they tend to be when I'm playing and listening to a story um, possibly rolling some dice um, I feel like I need to have my hands occupied and I always need something simple to knit and this has been perfect for that. The one thing that I did end up doing was making a mistake and decreasing on the wrong side. Um, so I just popped a stitch marker in there so that when I got to the decrease row, I would just go, okay, I'm on the correct side because I've got my, uh, my progress keeper on that side. Um, and that really helped me and, and sorted out that issue altogether. But yeah, trying to kind of concentrate on two things, but um, this was the perfect uh, project for that. Um, keeping me occupied during my D&D sessions. Um, so I do need to cast on another one at some point. I don't know if I'll do it straight away uh, because I will talk a bit about how I'm enjoying other projects in a moment and that means that we can swiftly move on to what I have been working on and my works in progress. So if you were watching my podcast in it'll be 2021 um, you'll probably have seen quite a few of these hats knit um, but in 2021 I went for a challenge to try and knit 52 hats in a year for charity um, and what I did was I either donated those hats to Hats for the Homeless or I sold them to friends and family and on eBay um, to raise money for both Alzheimer's research and um, I think the Stroke Society was the other one um, but I ended up falling in love with a particular pattern that is free of charge um, and it is called the mountaineer hat um, and I'll just pop a picture of a finished one here I, I think I made three overall and I sold them on eBay and they all went um, so obviously that kind of pattern appealed to other people as well um, now the mountaineer hat is a pattern I think by Kentucky Knits um, but I'll pop the details just below where I'm talking here so that you know who the pattern designer is um, and this will be my fourth one but a friend of mine who is a rock climber as well and enjoys the mountains um, it, he requested a hat for his birthday and I decided that I had to knit this pattern for him he asked for cables but um, I think this is gonna, yeah, put a smile on his face, hopefully. Um, so the yarn I am using for this before I show you the actual project is Bird Street Yarn. Uh, that's their label. Um, and it is a Stonewash Elba DK, which is 75% Merino and 25% nylon and it's super wash yarn. It has 100, for 100 grams, 225 meters. And this is by, hand dyed by uh, Claire and John, who, um, John used to be Mr. B's yarns, so they've just kind of collaborated and um, created Bird Street yarns instead as a business. And I wanted to go for quite a dark color. That is what my friend requested. Uh, so this is stone wash and it's a very very dark grey but it's got some lovely variation in it and it's also quite a round yarn um so i thought this would work for cables i'm going to see how it turns out in terms of actually showing up the design uh for the mountaineer hat uh, but the mountaineer hat starts with a twisted rib for the brim uh so that's where i am you can see my little progress keeper there uh, that's actually my start of round I gave up halfway um on a round last night 
but yeah, what I've ended up doing is not actually go with what the pattern suggests, but I've done a double brim. Uh, so it's the same on the inside. Um, and then I have picked up to make it kind of nice and squishy and warm and made it reasonably long. Um, this ha actually looks quite small. So um, I believe my friend has a, a head size about the same as mine and um, it's it looks small, but this rib actually stretches out quite a bit. So I really hope it will be okay. I'll have to test it um, probably later on when I've started to get a bit further on the actual pattern, just to see how much it stretches out, especially because I've picked up stitches from the cast on edge in the middle. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, I'm getting on quite well. I don't think it will take me too long uh, to finish this hat. It is for next weekend, so I do have a time limit. Um, I seem to remember that the hardest and most uh, kind of... The part that needed the most concentration is actually the bit that I'm starting now. So it's the bit with the mountains, if you can see in the picture. And then the rest is quite straightforward. So what I need to do, and I'll do that shortly, is really focus for about 10, 20 rows, and then um, it's smooth sailing until the decreases at the end. Um, so yeah, that is a work in progress. Um, I think the pattern actually calls for worsted weight yarn. Um, so I am using DK, and I did think about sizing up, but, um, I think I ended up doing my cast on a bit wrong and I ended up with 90 stitches instead of 100. Oh, it is a free pattern as well, if I haven't said that already. Um, so I'm hoping it will be fine, but yeah, we'll see. It's not the end of the world. If it's not, I'll just find another yarn and start it again, I suppose, and just say, oh, your present will be late. Um, but yeah, really lovely yarn to work with and I'm really looking forward to having this done and progressing on this project again, just because I love the pattern so much and I really need to knit myself a hat um, in the same style. Considering this will be my fourth one and this is not for me, um, I feel like I need to treat myself at some point. Um, so yeah, that is the Mountaineer hat uh, by Kentucky Knits. Um, I am keeping this hat in a lovely little yarn bowl, um, uh, which I will show you. Uh, so it's a little bird, and this is by Little Wren Pottery on Etsy. I got this as a Christmas present uh, the year before last from a cousin of my husband's. Basically we do a secret Santa that isn't secret, and we just kind of give a list of different things. Um, and I just love the colour of this little guy. Um, I've got two more Little Wren pottery yarn bowls because my house is full of yarn and yarny things. Um, and yeah, it's really great. It means I can just sit at the, have him on the table, uh, pull the yarn out through this slot and knit uh, my hat again whilst I'm playing D&D or watching something. Um, and yeah, the logo for Little Wren is on the base there. I'm not sure you'll be able to see. Yeah, so it's a, just a little wren, which makes sense. Little wren pottery. Um, I very much recommend these yarn bowls. They're not massively expensive either, um, and they're made here in the UK too. That is project number one that I am working on right now. The second one is another petite knit pattern um which i have talked about before on the podcast and this one is the november vest by petite knit and i believe last time i popped a picture up so i'll try and do the same now um this one is a brioche knit kind of vest type thing with pockets um it's open at the front and I think it's going to be the, t the type of thing that I would wear all the time. You know, I can put it over something dark for work, for example. It's got pockets, so that means that when I'm going and grabbing a coffee, I don't need to take, you know, my jacket or anything like that. And I think it's going to be 
a great transitional piece of knitwear. Um, and this is where I am so far. Let me get this organised. It's been all scrunched up in my bag. But here you go. Um, so yeah, it's a bit crinkled at the moment just because of how it's been in the project bag. But that's where I am. So what I've done is I've now separated for the sleeves and then started knitting a few rows of brioche. And this will carry on in the same way. So there's no increases, decreases or, or anything like that um, all the way down. Uh, then uh, you'll notice I've got a, a double knit uh, collar here that will be a band that goes all the way down um, and I'll be picking up stitches and knitting the same double knit uh, section on the sleeves to give it a nice finish and there'll also be a double knit band at the bottom of the vest as well. Then finally you knit the pockets and then you sew them on so that's quite interesting. I have never ever knit pockets or added pockets to anything. Um, my friend who is knitting a different pattern, I think it's, uh, I can't remember which one it is, it's a, an Andrea Mary pattern, um, is actually doing afterthought pockets on hers um, and that intrigues me quite a bit but um, these ones are knit separately and then attached uh, so I hope that my sewing will be tidy enough to do this piece justice. The yarn I am using is Hedgehog Fibres Tweedy and it's the kind of one of the two original bases. Um, so the grey with the Tweedy Neps. There you go. Lots of colour variation in this, which I really appreciate. Um, and the makeup is 50% Falkland Merino wool, 37.5% recycled wool, and 12.5% hedgehog fibres thread waste. Um, I believe this is a, a DK weight or sport to DK weight um, so I did have to change my measurements and my sizing for this uh, November vest according to my swatch um, but effectively what I've done is I've gone up a size or up two sizes to make up for the fact that um, this yarn is not as dense as what is called for in the pattern. Um, and I did have my swatch in here somewhere. So um, this currently is quite kind of defined, um, but in the swatch you'll see after I've washed it, it kind of evens out a bit and stretches out, uh, almost softens up um, in terms of how it looks. Uh, so I think it'll be absolutely lovely. I'm really looking forward to having this. Also the Tweedy Neps kind of then blend in to the fabric rather than being so separate from it uh, which is quite nice and yeah it's a really interesting construction um, that I haven't used before but I have to say the videos on the Petite Knit website are absolutely fantastic so what I had to do to begin with is cast on this double knit section uh, just for about that much then I created this kind of increase area on the back of the vest here and then you pick up stitches here and then knit over and include the double knit section um, in the picked up stitches uh, and then you get a nice looking back like this um, so yeah I highly recommend petite knit patterns um, and if you are knitting a petite knit pattern and you get stuck, it's great that she's got the resource on the website um, that you can just watch a video, kind of what I do is I tend to pause it, have a go, rewind, rewind, keep kind of refreshing it to just remind myself of each step. Um, and then you learn something new, which is fab. Um, I find brioche as a stitch incredibly meditative. It does take effectively twice as long as any other kind of standard knitting stitch. Um, that's because you do two passes of the same row. Um, but I find it quite kind of soothing to knit. It's um, kind of you, you, you knit and then you slip 
a stitch and then you knit and then you slip a stitch and yarn over so it's um it's just really nice I really enjoy it and this will probably be my D and D knitting so long as I don't make any mistakes um I think I managed it the other day so I'll be knitting very prolifically on this once the hat is done for my friend and that is that and I am keeping this in a bag which is by my friend who is a throat and thread um she made me a sweater bag and for Christmas she also got me or made me a notions pouch in the same fabric so I've got that in here as well I haven't filled it up yet um if you're watching I'm sorry I still haven't filled it up yet it's awful um so I need to switch over some of my notions from my other notions pouch um I'll decide what I need to actually keep with this um for this project and it's got a nice zip on the outside as well um and that is a great sized sweater bag um I probably could uh put a larger sweater in here as well I think I've had a bigger sweater in here um and it just works very very well I have it on the side next to the sofa so that I can just grab it and knit on this project. And that is all the knitting content I have for now, but I have been busy with some other things. So first of all, weaving. And the last time I um, podcast, I showed a weave in progress. Um, and this is with some leftovers that I had. Um, and what I had planned to do was make some fabric to sew some bags. Um, but <laughs> what happened is I finished this off and then decided it was too beautiful to cut up and make bags out of and I'm going to have to keep it as a scarf and gift it to someone as a scarf. Um, so this yarn is the Chopelle Starker 6 Zauberball. Uh, that's the colour changing yarn here and it's a bit like the crazy Zalba ball however it's a sport weight instead of a fingering weight and that's a weight of yarn that I prefer weaving with. The other yarn is also Chopel wool it is the Admiral version and that's a solid colour so you can see at the bottom here it's just kind of this emerald green and this scarf is almost done so what I still need to do is um, just twist the ends and tie them off so that they're nice and neat um, and possibly if I think I need to do it I might also fold up the very very edge um, fold it over and sew it down so that it's a bit tidier um, but I actually don't think my selvage edge is too bad on this one um, so I'll see how it goes um, and yeah that will be gifted to someone at some point um it is bad because I have quite a few scarves that I made in fact I can see them from here I've got two more waiting to be finished off that have been sitting there for about a year so um it is bad but I I have a home in mind for this already so uh, that's good at least it's not going to be hanging around for long um, yeah, and I, this is just a plain weave as well. So I'm not doing anything special. Warp and weft, just straight standard. But the colour changing yarn really does look lovely on a woven fabric. So there you go. That is another project almost, almost done. And I've also been doing some spinning. Uh, last May I did a course at Gillian Gladrags which is a shop in Dorking which is not too far away from where I live. Um, I had a spinning wheel from my grandmother. Uh, she kept it in the attic for years and years and it's a little bit damaged I would say. So it has a slit in the wood in the back and it's also quite hard to spin on. So in the end in June um, I bought a spinning wheel a shacked ladybug which worked really really well and I am obsessed with spinning on that now and um, so I do have two spinning wheels I feel quite greedy about that 
but um, it, it was a an X store sample wheel basically that they would do demos on um, so it needed a home and I thought why not I'll go for it and it's a lovely cherry colour um, so I've got that and it's become a new addiction I suppose um, I also got a fibre advent calendar from World of Wool um, over Christmas that was opening every day and you get a whopping 50 grams per day uh, in that fibre advent calendar which is fantastic value for money I think it was about 70 pounds um, so compared to what you get in a knitting advent calendar with kind of hand dyed yarn and things like that um, it's just much better value and um, I get the joy of spinning the fibre as well and I started spinning some of the fibre. So I spun some of the later days with the earlier ones. Um, basically I had a colourway called King Wenceslas. I think it was day 22. Um, and then Gold Frankincense and Myrrh, which was day two, I think. It was one of the earlier ones anyway. Um, and I spun them separately. And then asked my craft friends what they thought I should do with them. Um, and they said, spin them, uh, ply them together. So I went for it. And this is what I've ended up with. Um, so it has a little bit of Stellina. That's from the gold frankincense and myrrh colour, which is the lighter one. And then the King Wenceslas is a kind of bluey colour sort of midnight blue colour but it's also got bits of cream bits of gold bits of silver throughout it so you get a very kind of muted blue I would say um so yeah that's that's how it's looking at the moment and this is a two ply and I think it's about sport weight maybe sport to DK um, it obviously has some variation, but I'm very, very pleased with this spin and how it's turned out. Um, it's just really lovely. And what I plan on doing with this, because I think it will look very mild um, in the way that it knits up, um, because of the kind of barber pole effect of the yarn and the fact that it's even all the way through. Um, I actually ended up ordering some more of the King Wenceslas. So yes, it was day 22. Um, and this is what it looks like as the fiber. Um, so World of Wool made their advent colors and fibers available for other people to purchase after the advent. Um, some of them have sold out, but I think there are more still available. So I was able to buy 100 grams. Um, I think this was about five pounds something. Um, not 100% sure, <laughs> maybe nine for this one, I can't, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, this is the limited edition King Wenceslas. And what I am going to do with these two is I'm going to spin this. I've actually already started, it's on my wheel downstairs. Um, and I am going to knit a kind of quite cosy cowl. Um, so I've got 100 grams of yarn here. And then I'll have another 50 grams of the King Wenceslas. And then I'll probably spin the rest and maybe give them away to someone on my craft group. And um, I'm going to knit the rib of the cow, probably doubled over um, in the King Wenceslas. And then knit the majority of the cowl in this colour. And then at the other end have rib in the King Wenceslas again. Um, and I'm excited, I'm so excited to start and knit this, which is my hand spun, and make something out of it, which I haven't actually done yet. I gave a couple of hand spun skeins um, to a friend of mine for Christmas, and I'm really intrigued as to whether she gets to it before I do. Be quite interesting. Um, I wanna, I'm hoping they work out okay, because I'd love the feedback as well um so yeah that is one thing that i have been working on um at the same time as 
ordering the, the King Wenceslas, I decided to actually buy some more fibre because <laughs> I had to pay for postage anyway and I thought, you know what, I'm going to spin this, let's be honest, and I have a project in mind already. So first of all, I um, ordered 200 grams of Ice and Fire and I am so excited about how this is going to turn out because to me it's going to be really lovely. I'm going to combo spin it, so I'm going to separate out the colours, spin them in a bit of a gradient um, and then hopefully have a bit of a colour changing barber pole yarn. Uh, it's a, it's 200 grams um, and yeah I, w I saw this on the website and thought I have to have that. So my plan is actually going to be to use this in a colour work sweater so almost use it in place of something like spin cycle in a pattern um, because I think it will turn out very similarly and yeah it's got these gorgeous teals and turquoises the kind of burnt orange bright orange reds uh, throughout and I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous as soon as I get King Wenceslas off the wheel I think this is going on next even though I have what 21 <laughs> advent minis in terms of the 50 gram um sets of fiber to spin yeah i probably shouldn't have distracted myself from that venture so yeah i'm gonna do that and then the other thing that i'm gonna spin is this orange and it's got some lovely tweed sections in it as well um, so I'm hoping this turns out very, very well. And the idea is to spin this in a similar way to the colour mixed yarn. Um, this is 300 grams. And I think these two are going to work so well together as a sort of subtle colour work sweater. I have no idea what pattern I'm going to use. I think I need to t see how the yarn turns out and what thickness before I choose a pattern because I'm not that good at spinning intentionally I would say in terms of thickness of yarn and we'll see how I get on and then I'll probably choose a pattern from everything that I already own uh, to knit these into. Finally I couldn't resist uh, getting some fibre that is very very similar to the Hedgehog Fibres Tweedy. So this is Taste the Rainbow um, and it's a kind of grey base with sections of colour throughout and then some colourful Tweedy nips. Um, and I think this will be used for a simple accessory, probably something like a hat um, when it's spun up, but I thought this was pretty and just couldn't resist adding it to my car as well. I highly recommend World of Wool. Um, they are a really great provider of fibre and they have an amazing range as well so I'm sure you can find whatever you're looking for on there. They do custom blends and uh, this one I think was a blend created by one of their members of staff um, so just to kind of give it a name um, and they do themes as well so things like food or space or you know <laughs> all sorts of things um this is actually myth so i think this is part of a bit of a kind of fairy tales myths and fables uh, collection that they have um and i'm very excited to continue my spinning journey but i have a lot just sitting next to me here that i need to spin as well including the fiber that i dyed myself um so i need to get a bit of a move on however I need to spin intentionally for patterns I think um because there's a danger that I spin lots of yarn and just end up with it and not do actually do anything with it which is fine but I have enough yarn in my house if I'm going to keep adding to that by spinning more and not using it that's not really very purposeful so I'll probably be giving some away to my craft group friends um and my idea going forward is to make sure that I have a pattern in mind before I start spinning. Um, so for example, I did buy some fibre specifically to knit 
the Grow Shawl by Fiber Tails, um, and I also have the Grow Hat pattern by Fiber Tails. So I'm hoping I can do a combo piece. So spin enough for the shawl, and then the leftovers go into making the hat. Um, and that's it in terms of my fiber crafts stuff. I have ventured into other areas though. Um, so the first thing I am going to show you is something I made last weekend and this took me about five minutes. So this is designed to be a dice tray. So as you know I play D&D, I have a group um, that I DM for and I wanted to make them something as a bit of a late Christmas gift. Um, and what I ended up doing was buying a box frame from Hobbycraft, it's actually this one here. Uh, so it's 20 by 20 centimetres. And I think this is a great size for a dice tray. Often the ones that I find, the ones that I've um, got are too small to actually roll the dice within. Um, and the idea is I can keep this in the centre of my table and it's nice and big, I can roll the dice, they actually roll and then stop, rather than just kind of putting them into a small dice tray and they just kind of bounce and, and stop straight away. Um, this is, so yes, like I said, I've got a box frame from um, Hobbycraft, 20 by 20 centimetres. I've taken out the glass on the front, or I think it might be perspex actually rather than glass. Um, I've taken the back off, so that's the back. Um, and then this backboard here, done, is just stuck the fabric onto that and then put it back in place. And this works really, really well. It's super quick. Um, the glue that I used was actually double-sided sticky tape, but like a proper adhesive one so rather than it just being for paper um so it actually works with fabric and wood and um it works incredibly well uh, i have one of these of my own that i made for myself about two years ago i believe um but these are fairly affordable the box frames um you just cut out the fabric of your choice to the size of the backing board stick it on put it back together you're done. Um, this fabric was really good actually. I bought this fabric in, um, I think it was Bakewell in the Peak District, um, and it's quite a bit thicker than some of the other standard quilting fabrics that I have, um, and I think it actually sticks to the board much more easily. So it's because it's thicker, it kind of evens out nicely, whereas some of the quilting fabric sort of puckers as you try and push it out. So uh, whatever this is, probably some kind of cotton canvas has been great to use and I'll keep an eye out for more um, to make these with in future. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share a bit of that that I've been uh, getting on with. Um, I made three in less than half an hour and that included cutting out the squares in the first place, uh, setting everything up. So super, super quick craft no need to go and buy an expensive dice tray you can also just make one yourself out of some random things that you have um yeah and these box frames are great for it so yeah that's another craft that i've picked up i probably won't be making very many uh because otherwise i will have a house full of dice trays as well as yarn um but it's a really great idea for a gift for someone who is into role play games or even board games to be honest there's so many board games that involve rolling dice um so this is the sort of thing that we can just go okay we're we're playing this game oh it's got dice to roll in it let's grab the dice tray and use that as well um so very very practical and handy and like i said i like the fact that it has a good area for the dice to roll in right Next up is another diversion <laughs> from knitting and fibre craft. Um, so I have been watching uh, YouTube reels by a lady called Vickers. Vickers Space, I think is what her Instagram tag is and also what her website is. Um, and she is a an embroidery 
artist and she uses satin stitch on all of her makes but they are all mountain or lake themed and being me who is incredibly attracted to any kind of mountain imagery hence me making several mountaineer hats um I fell down the rabbit hole a little bit so um she runs something every year called a stitch along and this year it is once again happening she's got a new design and um it's free so the design the pattern itself is free the guidance for what uh embroidery threads to purchase free the um you just need to go and get the supplies basically and my idea was to buy this pattern, well, not buy the pattern, but buy the supplies and kind of make this pattern throughout the year. She's got several sizes. So um, I think it goes up to a 14 inch hoop, um, but you can make it one that's much smaller with the same design. You can just print it out on a different size. She's got all of those available. Um, and I went for a... 12 inch hoop so all I have done so far is drawn it out on the hoop um let's see if this shows up there you go so you've got a mountain range in the background these sections are all little trees and then you've got a river flowing through uh, so that's what it looks like um I haven't done any sewing yet so far but I will show you the colors that I bought um and again trip to Hobbycraft bought a few things uh, so I'm um, lucky to have a hobby craft craft shop uh, in my local town I know lots of people don't necessarily have that but perfectly easy to purchase things um, online you just have to wait a little bit longer to get them but yeah I got a cotton canvas um, and the 12 inch hoop both from hobby craft And then the colours I am using, so let me make sure I've grabbed all of them out of my bag. Um, so I'm going with the colours that Vicar has used for the mountain ranges. Um, let's see if this focuses. Yeah, so these are just uh, different levels of grey. So there's dark grey, medium grey, light grey. Uh, and these are uh, DMC um size five embroidery threads and then for the tree area she's gone very much with greens um, and quite kind of cold greens um, and I wanted something quite nice and warm uh, especially as I love the autumn colors <laughs> so you will see where this is going um so I have gone for uh, these ones here so I've got a dark green a light green and then I've got yellow kind of orangey yellow and a brighter red uh, to go um, so I'm gonna be sort of randomizing where I place the colors she actually on her pattern has numbers for specific areas so you can go okay I'll start with all the number ones and make them all the same color um, nine different colors for the whole thing um, so I also have a black but I completely neglected the fact that this has a river in the center so um, I'm gonna start on I think the ones are just part of the trees so I'll start with that and then when I end up having to um, so the river section I will go and get a blue <laughs> from um, Hobbycraft or somewhere else as I get to it uh, but yeah my hope is that I will really really enjoy this process it seems so in contrast to cross stitch the linen stitch embroidery seems much quicker um, because you're covering a large area every time you sew um, and the patterns that she's created and the sewing that she's done is absolutely amazing i urge you to go and check her out on instagram i will link to her website below but um she's got an array of different styles of mountain um and 
some lakes as well and I just think they're amazing I want all of them um in fact I can just picture I've got a blank space of wall just behind the camera I can just picture having several of these size um hoops on the wall with that embroidery I was also thinking oh this would be great if I got like a sweatshirt and then I could embroider a big round mountain on a sweatshirt that would be amazing um, so <laughs> let's see where this journey takes me. Um, some crafts I've started in the past I've just dropped. For example, I did do some cross stitch at some point. Haven't finished that piece. I need to dig that out because I need my needle minder. Um, but yeah, I am excited about this. I also, I don't actually know if this is not going to be enough, but at least I have the, the codes on here. So um, if I run out of a colour, before I've finished with it I'll just pop to Hobbycraft purchase some more if they don't have it I can order it online um so yeah and then the sewing needles that she recommended are actually milliner's needles um so I bought these hemline ones size three to nine uh I think it's reflecting a little bit much on the plastic uh, but these were recommended um, so I've got 10 of them in varying sizes and I will give this a go and hopefully show you a bit more of what I've been sewing next time embroidering sorry embroidering that's the correct word to be using and that is everything crafty I want to share this week um, but I hope to see you next time and have a fantastic couple of weeks enjoy your crafting please like and subscribe if you can it really helps other people to find my videos and happy crafting bye mm -hmm.